The doctors called for the pericardiocentesis. We're gonna do it. They've called for a stat echo. Echo's gotten in here. We're probably gonna be getting them prepped before echo even rolls in the door. I already said, doctor's gonna yank back, or if they don't, we're gonna have to pull down their drape to expose this area. Remember, they're gonna go sub xiphoid. That's primarily the spot where they're gonna go. So however we're gonna prep, whether it be they pass us off a chloroprep or they pour us some betadine in our little tray right here, we take and we clean. Try to hit the garbage. Clean. I said I would do it slower, but there we go. That's how fast, you know? Um, that doesn't go back on the tray because it's technically contaminated. I would try to hit my garbage if I could, but most of the time I do hit the, the ground. I'm not very good. Didn't play basketball for a reason. Okay. So what I need, this is not one of the first things that I'm going to be using, even though it's on the top. First, let's go ahead and break. So I'm going to take and just section off my chest. Kind of do a little triangular area. One of the things about when we're draping with anything other than our finisher, even our fenestration, we got to remember that if we were way out here, we can never pull back up. We can start smaller and pull backwards if we didn't make a good. So always make it a little bit smaller than larger to start with, just in case you can't go back in, okay? Now, normally what I would do, but I've got to have an opening so I can see, but I would have also put a drape on the top. Also, when you're draping like this, you got to remember to protect your hands. Think about when you're gowning your doctor, how you've got to get your hands back when you're putting your tube drapes on. You've got to have your hands covered. Same thought process. Don't hit the patient on your way of laying these down, okay? Now, I'm gonna just move this out of the way so I can see where I'm actually getting access. I've done that. Now, doctor's ready for me to start giving him the supplies. What I'm gonna try to remember to do with my bag is to go ahead and clamp off and have that sitting there ready to go. It's one of the last things I'm gonna need, so I'm gonna just kind of push it out of the way. First thing what we're gonna need is our needle, possibly our blade, and our wire. Now, obviously, too, if we were, I would already have had some wet out here and maybe the doctor still had a few dry. If we needed lidocaine, then of course I would get the lidocaine first. I'm not gonna make you guys give me any lidocaine because we're, again, this is gonna be an emergent, emergent procedure, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is the doctor is going to be up here starting to try to get access. So they're gonna take their needle and they're gonna go ahead and poke it in. Pull the stylet out, toss it down here. And so of course they need their wire here ready to go. All right, at the same time the doctor is doing that, I'm gonna be down here getting the next items flushed and ready to go in the patient. So the next thing that we were, are going to need is our dot tissue dilator if that's what the doctor wants. So I'm gonna get it ready. If I have enough time, I'm gonna go ahead and get my catheter prepped as well. Ready to go in, okay? If I have enough time, I'll also go ahead and get my stopcock on and my bag is there ready to go. Now, the doctor may, I thought at any time when I'm prepping that stuff, the doctor may pull me and say, I need your help up here. They may be done. So maybe they'll do a little nick in the skin, pull out the needle and be ready for the tissue dilator. Okay. 
they probably, I'm gonna make you guys help me. So you're gonna have to load the tissue dilator on. Let me have it. You're gonna hold the wire taut, just like if we were putting a sheath in the patient. Doctor's gonna put the tissue dilator in, dilate that tissue tract, pull it back out. I'm gonna try to reach up and wipe. And then doctor's ready for me to give them the catheter. Load the catheter on. Gonna load the catheter on. Give them some tension on the wire. Obviously it can be done one-handed, but it's not as easy. So I will have you guys hold the wire so that I can just concentrate on getting the catheter in wire comes out. I need to then have my 20 cc syringe and my bag down here ready to connect. Now in the real world, the doctor may be the one, you just hand them this, but it could be, what if the patient's wailing or I don't know, whatever, moving around, they might have to be holding the patient. You may have to do this. So I'm gonna have you do this. You're going to put your 20 cc syringe on the side port. Now, also, while all this is going on, we do wanna try, if we can, to at some point, get these sharps out of here. So we don't get stuck, okay? Now, I need my bowl of fluid very quickly. I'm just gonna move down so it doesn't fall. So then to start aspirating from the patient is pretty simple. You're gonna turn your stopcock. It, this is an off handle, just like the majority of the ones we've been using. So right now it's open from catheter to bag. It's not gonna just start draining. The pressure in there is about four to five millimeters of mercury, kind of like a right atrial pressure. So you're actually gonna to have to pull the fluid out. So you're gonna to have to turn your stopcock off to the bag, open from the catheter to the syringe. You're gonna start withdrawing. You do want to withdraw slowly. You don't wanna do this. Some of y'all have a tendency to really pull back on these stoppers. I'm not pointing out anyone. <laughs> but anyway, gentle aspiration, okay? Fill your syringe. Now we wanna get it out into the bag so that then we can draw some more out. We could have to draw up to 100 cc's, who knows? Okay, turn your stopcock off to the catheter. Now you can push that in fast. Turn back open, gently withdraw. However many times till the doctor tells us. We should have echo in here watching the fluid dissipate, we should start seeing them become hemodynamically stable again. So what's going to happen to their pressure if they're going tamponade? It's going to drop. It's going to start dropping and actually like your aortic waveform, because we should probably still, we will, we will for sure, still have our guide catheter in the patient and we'll be able to see aortic pressure waveform. Okay, so it would start Dropping and actually systole and diastole is gonna start coming close to equal, All right? So it should start, once we start pulling the fluid off, whoop, stay down in there, a little gentler. They'll start becoming hemodynamically stable again. Okay, so we're pulling off as much as we need to. Now, if you ever did have to empty the bag, I had to do this once, and nobody showed me. It's pretty easy, but I wanna show you and I want you guys to practice it. I'm gonna make you do it. Has a little cap on the end, so you're gonna take the little cap off. You're gonna unclamp, and the reason we clamp it down is so that the blood doesn't leak while we are filling the bag. Unclamp it, that's very similar to the clamp on our Femstop. 
and then we can just empty the bag. And I usually just kind of let gravity. By that point, your patient's probably pretty stable. And of course, this will be bloody. Okay, so I've emptied my bag. You want to reclamp and put your little cap back on. Okay. Now, say that we want to leave it in. So we're not sure that we got it sealed 100% to the hole and the doctor's like, um, let's just leave it in, send them to the floor, we'll monitor them, make sure it's still not leaking and we might have to pull some more off if they get more effusion. What we're gonna do is turn our stopcock off Okay, even though it's not really gonna drain on its own, we still wanna just go ahead and turn the stopcock off. We can take our large syringe off. This is where we're gonna use that dead end cap. Maybe I can get it out of here. I think I put it in the wrong hole. There we go. We're going to possibly suture now, the thing about suturing this is kind of useless in my opinion, but I have had doctors ask me to do it because what you do is you do make a little, you go to the skin, you wrap the suture around the catheter and, and you make your tie. This could still pull the best suture is when we have a sheath that has a little side port like this or a little side hole where we can actually run our suture through it and, and run it through the skin. That's really going to keep it from pulling out. Technically, what you could do is just take some 4 by 4s Of course, by that point, we would have to take all this back, put a large tegaderm, nice and tight and secure, bring this up onto the patient's chest, and we could transport them with this still in their body. Okay? Now, if we're at the end of the procedure and we put a covered stent in, one of those graft covered stents and we sealed the hole and we're good. We know the doctor feels comfortable. No more effusion. We've set, let them sit here for a few minutes, you know, for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, however long. Uh, echo, check them. Um, then we may just pull it out and apply a little bit of pressure and then put a little bandage on this area. So we pull it out very similar to a venous sheath with Pull straight out and just apply some light pressure for about five minutes or so. Remember, it is not a high pressure system, so we don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. Okay? Would you continue the other procedure or would that just be? So at this point, we would have probably already finished whatever else okay. we were doing. This would be the last step. I'm just sh showing you right now. But um, yeah, we would have finished everything. And then, like I said, the doctor determined, okay, we don't need to leave this in. Let's pull it. They may pull it, or I've had them tell me to pull it out because they'll break scrub and you'll have to stay scrubbed. And they'll say, okay, we're gonna wait 15 minutes and we're gonna get an echo and make sure that there's no, no more effusion. They're not building up again. And then, well, you go ahead and pull it. Pull it, put a little bandage, very similar to what we would do when we pull a sheath. Little tegaderm or big tegaderm, whatever they you wanna use, and get them out, okay? All right, I wanna show you how to suture, but I 